I'm about to be predicting every NBA playoff team's first round series. Tons of superstars have a legitimate shot to win their first ring. Some try to shock the world under difficult circumstances. I broke my back, spinal. I broke my back, spinal. spinal. And others are trying to defend a legacy intertwined with GOAT status. Stick around to see if I think your favorite team or player will live up to expectations, or if us fans should expect a stunning outcome. First, Big Man gets the shout out, who says that the Blazers will take the Lakers to seven games, and if they were fully healthy throughout the season, that they would firmly be in the upper echelon of the Western Conference. Question for next video shout out coming up. Thanks for all the great answers. Y'all make up the best Hoopstock community on YouTube. We'll start with the fourth versus fifth seeds in each conference, starting with the East, and work our way to the first versus eighth seeds. That means the TJ Warren Jimmy Butler back and forth battle that's sure to ensue headlines the first matchup I'll be predicting. In the past, Butler and Warren's proved to be one of the best rivalries in basketball, and it's about to get even more heated, given the Pacers are missing an absolute beast in DeMontis Sabonis, who really makes everything tick for them. They'll have to rely on a combination out on the perimeter of, yes, a Michael Jordan-like TJ Warren, but a pretty rusty Victor Oladipo who struggled with his consistency. While there's respect to be given to what the Pacers have going for them at full strength, they'll miss the services of the man in the middle who makes everything work for them. So dominant Miami Heat duo Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo surrounded by a young core of snipers and phenoms, plus talented veterans Andre Iguodala and former all-star Goran Dragic, put the Pacers to bed in six games. Officially the Cinderella story team of the 2019-20 season, with the talented up-and-coming Grizzlies eliminated, is the OKC Thunder. The revamped Chris Paul has potentially proved his former team wrong for giving up on him this season, but now he's set out for legitimate revenge on the Houston Rockets. For the first few games of this series, we won't see Russell Westbrook and look for CP3 to take advantage in every single outing Russ sits out. I expect Paul to find a scarily focused zone and play incredibly motivated basketball. However, it won't be easy. This series goes seven games because of Paul going off, but OKC, unfortunately, is going up against an offensive powerhouse. Austin Rivers will be an X-Factor for Houston, but here's what this matchup comes down to. Does OKC have anyone capable of not getting exposed while consistently slowing down Harden from getting into the lane? If Shea Gilgis Alexander puts on a defensive clinic, then maybe, but I'm still picking the beastly beard-led Rockets to ultimately get it done, Rockets in seven. Three words sting fans in the city of brotherly love in 2020. No Ben Simmons, one of the top slashers and wing defenders in our game, is out yet again. After headlining my top 10 players returning to the lineup video right before the scrimmages, Ben Simmons was forced to have knee surgery and is out for the year. That means two of the best up-and-coming wing players in the game today in the electric Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown can essentially do whatever they want. What many underrate about Ben Simmons is what he adds to Philly's perimeter defense. Other than Tobias Harris, I don't see anyone coming close to bothering Boston's lengthy young stars. I do think Embiid dominates given the Celtics don't have anyone to stop him, but you can't forget Boston has four 17 plus point scores. Kemba Walker and Gordon Hayward provide the Tatum-Brown combo some above average scoring relief. Celts in five. Utah's missing their second 20-point scorer next to Donovan Mitchell in Boyan Bogdanovich, a marksman on the perimeter who had a tremendous impact. Rudy and Dimitch should still be a problem though, and with Mike Conley's endless amount of playoff experience, that should keep a team that the moment's been too big for in the past settle down. It's too bad they had an inconsistent regular season and put themselves in a first-round series with a top three to four contending team in the Denver Nuggets. Michael Porter Jr. is blossoming into an all-star right before our eyes to give the star Murray and superstar Jokic the support they desired in the past, while a fast-footed giant emerges out of nowhere this year in Bull Bull. The Nuggets' depth on the wing as well, and really everywhere, is just stellar, with two-way players like Jeremy Grant, Torrey Craig, and recent standout rookie PJ Dozier. I think Denver game plans in on D-Mitch with those options and keep the Jazz all-star in check and they beat the Jazz 4-2 in the best of seven series. This is one of the more intriguing series in my opinion. You've got two of the best rising teams in the Western Conference. Who's gonna come out on top? I'm really looking forward to it. Kicking off the first step in their championship defense, the Toronto Raptors take on the Karis LeVert, Joe Harris-led Brooklyn Nets. 
a team that has superstars looming on the injury reserve. Meanwhile, Toronto's shown that 1 through 15, they're a dangerous squad to mess with. In the thumbnail, you may have realized Pascal Siakam wasn't in the picture. Even though he's unequivocally Toronto's best player, I left Spicy P out to display the talent this man has around him. There's four players having career seasons next to Pascal, in Serge Ibaka, Kyle Lowry, Norman Powell, and Fred Van Vliet. Other than Lowry, who's improved his confidence in the clutch after coming up big in the finals last year, all the players I just listed are averaging a career best in scoring, so Pascal should feel as, if not more confident, pre, during, and post every playoff game this year than he was in the Raptors' 2019 title run. Siakam's shown that he can be a go-to guy down the stretch of games and hit game winners all 2019-20. And even though Kawhi's gone and he's the number one option now, there's a ton of support for him if teams decide to trap him. So it'll be fans in Brooklyn's time to celebrate before you know it, but Toronto wins 4-1 against the Nets in 2020. The Clippers owned the Mavericks in the regular season, but with the Slovenian phenom Luka Doncic making his playoff debut, will things be different? A week ago, Dallas tried a mix of Luka Doncic and Dorian Finney-Smith on Leonard with even Maxi Kleba and Tim Hardaway Jr. attempting and failing to slow down the claw. The most underrated part of Kawhi's game is his passing ability, no doubt, and that's what makes him such a nightmare to defend. Watch here how he blows past Luka Doncic, hop steps into the lane, fakes out Porzingis for the lay-in, then somehow maintains his pivot foot and finds enough space to whip a bullet pass to Markeith Morris. I'm predicting Kawhi breaks down the Mavs defense all series long. However, Montrez Harrell will play his first game in six months. It'll take a few games for him to get comfortable in the offense. Plus, Luka and KP are debatably the best up-and-coming duo in the game, and when the Mavs with those two, plus snipers like Seth Curry, Hardaway Jr., find a rhythm, they can score the ball pretty damn well, so Dallas gives LA a run for their money and take two games, but the beastly second-seeded Clippers move on. Tragically, future all-star in my opinion, Jonathan Isaac, got injured yet again, and Aaron Gordon didn't participate in Saturday's magic practice. Also, Al Farouk Aminu, who Orlando brought in to guard top wing scores, has been sidelined all season. That's three players who could have slowed down the freakiness of the Greek. If the Magic find a way to compete in any of these games somehow, this banged up, and Giannis plays in fourth quarters, then I'm making the prediction that Giannis could break some history with his attacking of the paint. I really don't see who slows down the best slasher in the league's momentum here for Orlando, so this could go down as one of the greatest individual playoff series from a player ever. The Bucks sweep the Magic in round one. Saving the most intriguing series for last, Dane Time, injured but determined CJ McCollum, and the center who's returned to look like a bona fide all-star, combined to lead an incredibly dangerous 8th seeded Blazer team. If you tuned into my last video, or just aren't living under a rock, then you know how generationally great Lillard's been playing right now. However, this isn't a one-man show or a team that's top-heavy by any stretch, because the return of Yusuf Nurkic allows starter caliber center Hassan Whiteside to move to the bench, giving them the depth to match players like Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, and of course Anthony Davis. Also, Carmelo Anthony is looking as smooth as he's ever been in his career and is facing his old buddy LeBron in a playoff series for the first time since 2013. That could be some motivation for him, but the question of this series will come down to one factor. Zero Dark 30-23 mode versus Dame Time. Whichever top talent asserts himself the most will give their team the series win. If Portland won, then they would be the first 8th seed to beat a number 1 seed since 2012. But despite looking cold as of late, the Lakers still have two of the top five players who have tremendous pick and roll chemistry and should only gain rhythm as their time in Orlando progresses. To be honest though, this clip of LeBron locking up both Kawhi and Paul George on the last possession is reason enough for me to pick the Lakers. LeBron will almost definitely see time defending Damian Lillard, but this isn't going to be a walk in the park. You can't forget the Lakers are missing Avery Bradley and Rajon Rondo, leaving the memed goat Alex Caruso with a ton of defensive responsibility out on the perimeter, so this could shock you. But I think this series goes seven games, but in game seven, I'm betting on the Lakers defense to close it out. 
For more NBA predictions, stories, and rankings, hit subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. Let me know your complete first round bracket predictions for a chance at next video shout out and to compete in Community Speaks. My name's Adam. Call me D-Flow. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video.